Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Um, if you watched the last video, then you know exactly what this video is going to be about. But if this is your first time here, then today I'm going to be taking some Instagram template designs that I originally created in Adobe Illustrator and recreating them as Canva templates. The reason why I thought about this idea is because a lot of the times we might work with clients or you might have to create something for someone who doesn't know a lot about technology. Either they don't have access to any of the programs like Adobe or they're really just not that tech, they're not that great with technology. Um, maybe some of them don't even own a computer to, to edit these things on. So I wanted to kind of um, just show that it is possible to create something that is user friendly for a client who really doesn't know a lot about uh, graphic design or technology and stuff like that. So um, there are a few tips that I have um, before even before starting or even while you're doing this process in Canva. So the first tip that I have is to be prepared. Obviously, I actually kind of knew that I was already going to create these templates in Canva. So I was already kind of um, choosing fonts based on what was available in Canva and just trying to keep things fairly simple because I know that Canva doesn't have a huge range of tools like Adobe Illustrator does. So you might want to go into Canva and just play around and get familiar with what's available and what's not. But for me, I went in beforehand and I took a look at what was available for fonts in Canva and chose those fronts for my brand identity. And I also took a quick look at what, what was available for shapes and, and frames to know um, what I could use from Canva and then what I would have to recreate as a graphic element and stuff like that. So the second tip that I have is to know what's going to be editable. What can your client edit? What can't they, they edit? And, and so on. Um, most of the time text is going to fall into that category, but you might have something like a shape or a, some kind of a graphic element that you want the client to be able to change the color of or something like that. And, and so you, you want to know that beforehand. And the reason why is because it's going to, it's going to affect how you save those elements. If you don't want to change anything about your your little your design element then you'll save it as a PNG with a transparent background but if you do want them to be able to change the color of something then you you might want to save it as an SVG file instead and then the third tip that I have is to think in terms of layers um, when you get into Canva the best way to go about recreating your template is to work from the back to the front so that's taking your background image, some of the images that fall behind a picture and uh, first, and then putting your picture in, and then putting anything that goes in front of the image um, at the end. So with that in mind, let's get started. So here I am in my Illustrator program. What I'm doing here is I'm just taking all of the different design elements that appear in all of my templates. I'm just moving them off to the side and then I'm going to be saving them as separate PNG files with a transparent background. For in my case I don't want the client to be able to edit the colors of these that's why I'm saving them as a PNG but if you wanted them to change the color of like you know, the triangle or something like that, then I would save those as SVG files instead. All right, now that I have all of those saved individually, it's time for me to create the document in Canva. If you have never been to Canva before, I do highly recommend just kind of opening an account and just exploring a little bit as to what this platform is capable of doing, but essentially there is already a 
pre-formatted Instagram post size that you can choose. You can either choose it from the sizes available towards the top or I usually just scroll down and look for the Instagram post heading and then I click on the see all option and then I will choose the one that says create a blank Instagram post option. The first thing that I do when I have this document open is I rename it because it will auto save as you are working on this, this design. And then the next step is to upload all of those different graphic elements that I just finished saving out in Illustrator and importing them into Canva. And here I am going into Illustrator to kind of copy the color hex code for my background. Uh, ideally, I would actually recommend taking a sheet of paper and copying down those hex codes so that you can easily refer to them as you're designing. Um, but I didn't do that, so I had to do it the hard way and just flip back and forth and copy and paste the hex codes every time I needed them. Uh, really, once you have you copy them once, uh, you'll notice um, throughout the process that when you go to change the color of something, um, it will show you the colors that already appear on your document. So that's kind of, uh, that's kind of helpful once you start designing. Normally I don't do this where I split this kind of screen in half, but uh, for this video and just for some easy reference, I just put Illustrator on the one side and Canva on the other side so that you can kind of see um, a little bit better what I was recreating. So now it's just time to start recreating um, the template. Now when it comes to getting the sizes right for some of these elements, I would actually go into the Illustrator and then just take a look at what the size was for the element and then just resize it in, in Canva as close as possible. The only time that I found that it really didn't work well was with text. Um, I found that the, the size of the text in Illustrator uh, didn't really, wasn't the same when it was in Canva, so I just kind of had to eyeball it and adjust the, adjust the text size accordingly.
that is it for our recreated Instagram templates in Canva. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. And I will just put up a little bit of a slideshow as to what we ended up coming or what I ended up coming up with. So you can see the comparison between the original Illustrator file and the version in Canva. See you next time.